Hey folks, my name is Jim Johnson. I'm the author of the Pistols and Pyramids series, and uh, today is March 1st, and I'd like to welcome you to this Scrivener tutorial. What is happening here is that I am in the process of switching over from PC to Mac. My uh, PC died an ugly death, and my wife has a Mac that she hardly ever uses, so we thought we would uh, try out the Mac with, uh, with my software that I'm using for uh, writing and publishing see if it works, and uh, if so, keep the Mac and uh, say goodbye to the PC, which is basically a big brick at the moment. So what I've done is I've installed Scrivener on, uh, on the Mac here, and I've uh, you know gotten the, um, the license and got that all set up, and I haven't actually set up the project file for my new series that I'm going to be starting on today and this week, and so I thought I would take the opportunity, since I have to do it anyway, I would set up the Scrivener project file uh, in the way I like to do it, and uh, those of you who are new to Scrivener or thinking about trying Scrivener out, uh, this would be an opportunity for you to see how it how it works under the hood, as it were, and show you some of the functionality, and uh, show you that uh, Scrivener, while it is a very complex program with a lot of function and functions and features, uh, you only really need to use a little bit of it to get started and get going. Um, you don't have to be um, using it all right from the very beginning. In fact, there's I'm sure there's functionality on it that I haven't even figured out yet. So this first video is going to be uh, just setting up the project file, and then I'll probably do another video uh, with my uh, outlining process. And uh, so we'll go ahead and get started, but uh, feel free to ask questions in the comment sections on my blog. Um, I'm also going to start a thread on Kboards uh, to talk about this. So uh, let's get going. So here's the desktop. Here's Scrivener. It's already installed. Um, I've already got the license installed, so we'll double click on that. Open it up. This is the uh, first screen you'll see. Project templates. There's a variety of templates that you can pick from. There's also several tutorials that Scrivener has provided for you, which are very, very good. I highly recommend checking those out. And uh, the video tutorials um, are on YouTube and um, are worth checking out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with a fiction template. Uh, we could do a novel, novel with parts, or a short story. We're going to go with novel. Uh, hit choose. It will tell you to pick a uh, name, so we're going to go with um, Challenge No, we're not. We're going to go with uh, Oh yeah, there we are. Challenge. <clears throat> and it's going to save to my folder. If I want to put any tags on there, I can. Otherwise, we'll go to Create. Place it, yes, because I already did the test earlier, so I'm going to just write over it. And let the computer grind for a moment or two, and we'll pop it up. So we'll maximize this. So this is the uh, this is what you'll see when you start a uh, novel format. There's a lot of stuff here to take in, so don't don't be scared, don't be overwhelmed. Just uh, take a look at some of the functions. I mean, you can see there's a lot of stuff here going on. We're not going to use a whole lot of it, but just uh, real quick, this is the binder section over here. It has a lot of important stuff. That's going to be one of the most used pieces of it. This is the main middle section here is where your manuscript is going to be and the actual text and whatnot. And over here is something called the inspector, which you can turn on and off by clicking the inspector button. And this just gives you more functions and more functionality tied into uh, the document. You can uh, do tags and labels and just all kinds of really great features that probably aren't all that needed sometimes, depending on how you like to work. So we're going to go over here to the binder. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start changing this to the format that I like to use for my, uh, for my books, my series. And uh, I'll talk through it as we go. So you see there's already a lot of stuff here that uh, Scrivener preloads. And um, some of it is useful, some of it's not so useful, depends on how you like to work. Excuse me, I've got a little bit of water. So the, uh, the manuscript folder up here is uh, where you're going to be putting your documents as you get ready to compile them into various ebook formats or whatever. So that's that's going to stay there. Um, now this is a little bit different from the PC because I don't remember the characters, places, folders being up here. So that's interesting. Now those won't compile unless you want to, but what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to research. This is a, uh, a major piece of the uh, binder, and we're going to rename that to Series Bible, because that's just how I like to roll. So 
So you see there's a folder underneath that called sample output, and that's some stuff that Scrivener throws in here. So I'm going to minimize that and just leave it there because I don't really, I'm not going to look at it too closely right now. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, you got something called template sheets. There's a character sketch and a setting sketch that comes preloaded. Um, if you are that kind of writer who likes to use these things, they're, uh, they're preloaded. Um, I don't use this type of format, but they're nice to have to look at for inspiration and ideas. You, know, you get character sketch and stuff. Uh, so, under series Bible, that's where I am. I'm going to click, go down here to the bottom and see this little plus sign. And then there's a plus sign with a folder. So clicking on the plus sign with a folder will create a new folder document. Whereas clicking on the, just the plus sign will create a new document. So we're going to click on that a whole bunch of times create a bunch of new folders, and you can see that minimizing them, maximizing them, there's nothing here, right? So we're going to uh, name the first new folder characters. We're going to name the next one. You can see you can either double click on the file name over here to change it, or you can go up here to change it. And then there's another view you can use. If you go up here to Series Bible, these are all the folders that are over here in a uh, um, corkboard kind of format. If you like corkboard, I love the corkboard. It's one of my favorite functions here in Scrivener. So you can go in here and you can, instead of clicking over here into the names, you can go in here. So you can click on here and call this main characters, and call this supporting Characters, and you can see as I make the changes over here on the corkboard, they are automatically made over in the uh, binder there. Um, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. So, uh, noodling uh, sets locations. Um, I like to name all of my. I like to refer to my uh, different locations in books as uh, sets and locations. That's the artifact from my uh, theater background. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, draft novels. We've got magic. <coughs> Excuse me. The wonders of recording in real time, right? Uh, religion, if it's a factor. Magic, religion. Setting details, uh, graphics. All right, so this is just starting to throw some stuff together here. So uh, main characters and supporting characters. I selected those by holding down the command key. I'm moving both of those into main character, into the character folder. So now you can see that the folders are underneath characters. So if I minimize that, you'll just see the one. Um, buttons, sets, locations. Draft novels. So under here, we're going to create another folder. There, we're going to call that one. And then in there, we're going to create a document. Uh, this is just an untitled document. Uh, so this is actual an actual text document, and we're going to call this uh, chapter one. And this is just going to be a placeholder for now. So what this is, is this is going to be the text file that is actually going to have the text of chapter or scene or whatever. And you can go from here and, of course, change the font to anything you want. I'm not sure what kind of fonts are on here, but I like, because I am old school like this, I like Courier. Well, font. That's a little small for me to see, so we're going to bump that up to 125. Um, couple spacing. No bullets. Uh, oh, interesting. So there's some different stuff here from the PC version. Uh, obviously, the uh, if you're if you're trying to choose between the uh, Mac version and the PC version of Scrivener. Um, everybody I've talked to has pretty much said go with the Mac version because it's uh, got a whole lot of more functionality. Um, and I was really happy with the P 
PC version while I was using it, but because the uh, Mac is where I am now, I'm going to be switching over to the Mac. So this is the text file, so it's just like uh, Word or any other word processor. You can change the font, change the styles, mess with the uh, alignment, formatting. Uh, one important piece that is going to be very useful for you if you like to track word counts is uh, down here in the lower right corner of this window pane is a little target. If you click on that, it will tell you what your target word count is for this particular document. Um, my scenes tend to run no longer than 1,500 words, so I shoot in a target of 1,500, hit OK. And so down here is a little track bar, and down here it says words 9 of 1,500. And a nice little pop-up window will remind you. And then as you as you type and fill in more text, text that word count and word meter at the bottom of the screen will change, change, change. There we go. So as you can see down here, there's a little bit of red on the uh, on the meter here, just to show that uh, I'm starting to creep toward my goal. This shows me exactly where the word where the word goal is. So I've got 31 words out of 1,500, 150 characters, and then if I were to uh, cut and paste here, you know, blah 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 blah. You can see that word meter starting to creep up a little further, so that's useful to have. Uh, there's also uh, an option somewhere where you can see the project statistics. You can look at project targets and statistics, text statistics, if you want to get a sense of, uh, you know, what's your, you know, it's like this selection, the 248 words, 1232 characters, one page, that kind of stuff. You can look at options. There's just a lot of stuff here. Uh, you can estimate pages per page, or uh, words per page, just a lot of stuff there. But anyway, we're probably getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, so what I'm going to do is just kind of delete all that, and delete all that. So that is my chapter template, basically. So anytime I write stuff, um, I'm going to dump it into here. And what you can do, now that you have one, is you can right-click on it, and you can hit Duplicate. It'll immediately create a new copy. And we'll just uh, change that to Chapter 2. And you can see that uh, because I created a word target on this one, the duplicate has it too. So this is way, this is a little bit easier than uh, coming down here, creating a new text document, and then having to change the, uh, the, the font and the template and all that stuff again. So we're going to right-click on that, remove it to trash, because we don't need it. And if you see down here, there's a trash icon. The, the trash is where it's going to save everything that you've trashed. So as you go through your uh, your um, project, as over the life of your project, as you uh, throw stuff away, or delete it, or trash it, or whatever, it's going to stay down here until you get rid of it. And it's handy because if you uh, trash something that you didn't mean to trash, then uh, it'll be it'll be sitting right there for you. So let's see. So we've got, uh, I think we've got pretty much everything I need in the series Bible here. Uh, let's see. Sample characters, plot noodling, sets locations, the draft novel, magic word, graphics. Ah, graphics. Uh, we want a new folder from under there. Put that up there. And we're going to call that. Um, Character photos, and then we're gonna right click on that, and we're gonna call this maps, and then we'll click on it again, and we'll call this other images. So, uh, Scrivener has the means. If you find a graphic somewhere on the uh, interweb, you can pull it right in here. Because basically, these are all buckets of information. These are basically folders. That you can put content into, and it's all saved under the big um, single project file for Scrivener. So let's see, is there anything else we want to add here? Um, not really. I think um, I don't know why this is here, so we're going to trash that. Uh, trash that. Uh, front matter, manuscript format. I think I'm just going to leave this here until I get around to having to compile it, but I don't 
think my stuff is the same, so we're just gonna we're just gonna leave all of this for now. Because it's irrelevant. And then there's manuscript. You wanna keep manuscript. Of course you can't trash it, so you gotta keep it there. Uh, front matter you can trash because that's just a file. Series Bible you can't trash because that's important. So really the two pieces that are or the three pieces that, that are in every project file that you can't get rid of are is manuscript, series bible, and trash. Series Bible, you can put all kinds of stuff in here. Manuscript, you can put all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, this little explanation point that just shows you some information about this template, which is useful information to read. But uh, I'm not going to cover that here. I'm just trying to give you a sense of how do you, how some of the functionality in Scrivener works just to get started with the, uh, the format of a project file. And uh, maybe useful, maybe not. I don't know. You'll have to tell me uh, in the comments section if you can. So basically what we have here is um, the, uh, the project file, as I like to use it for the most part. Um, and then what will happen is now that I have all these uh, um, folders, I'll start populating these folders with, uh, with um, text documents filled with uh, useful information. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm hoping to do a whole series of videos on Scrivener because uh, there's just so much functionality here and it's useful to uh, get a sense of it. But just to start out, I wanted to show you how to kind of start using a uh, um, file or you know creating a project. So we're going to make sure we save this. And I think that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I apologize for my cold. I hope it's not too hard to understand. If you have any questions, leave a comment, send me an email. I'll uh, provide the links under the, uh, under the video. And uh, have a great day. Happy, happy, happy writing.